140 million human beings are born every year, give or take. Worldwide population is approximately 7.8 billion. Every second, 1.8 people die, while 2.4 or 4.2 or 4.2 are born into that very same second. Nothing I've ever done will make any dent in these metrics. Welcome back to Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest, the weekly podcast for movie enthusiasts, ex-movie theater projectionists, new and old friends. Take the time to talk about a movie that we just watched and answer that very question, should or shouldn't you watch this? I want to extend a warm welcome to Mr. Sack Lunch himself. Welcome back to part two of The Killer. Yes, sir. I always... It, it's hard when we when we break it up into the to the different weeks because we don't want to spoil things in in week one, but we still have to set it up enough. And so True. week two, while I do love so many elements, let's review the reviews, things like that that we did last week, this is where I really enjoy because we can be a little little unfettered. Yes, and that's that's the thing. So. This is spoiler zone, so if you haven't watched The Killer, please go kill it and come on back. Here's our trailer for this week. This one's a little longer, but I think it's good. I find music a useful distraction. A focused tool. Keeps the inner voice from wandering. is purely logistical. If I'm effective, it's because of one simple fact. I don't give a For what it's worth, I would never have involved your female friend. Forbid empathy. Please. Trust no one. Fight only the battle you're paid to fight. Breathe. Breathe. Calm. Prepare to be excited. This is what it takes. I I played that mainly because it's kind of spoilery. I am glad I didn't watch that trailer because I didn't like what Tilda Swinton says about the female friend. Yeah, the female friend. I feel like that's a really big story element that you I liked not knowing about. Yeah. I mean, that's why I didn't play this trailer for last week. I saved it for this week because I felt like it was spoilery. I'm with it. Anyway. Okay. All right. Do you want to just jump right into popcorn trivia? Yeah, man. I'm in. Let's roll. All right. Let me tell you something, Pandeo. I only have two trivia points, but I think they're cool. I'm a graphic designer, so the font used for the titles of each chapter of the movie are the same ones used in the Hitman video game from 2016. Really? Okay. I thought that was cool. I mean, I don't think I would have ever made that connection had I not looked it up, but it's kind of a fun thing. Yeah. Well, why why does he do that? Do you know what I mean? Like, what goes through his head? Like, why does he tie that one together? Maybe he's just trying to throw an ode out to, to the Hitman video game? I guess, yeah. I mean, he's pretty... He has a huge attention to detail, probably on the erring on the side of like kind of too much where he's like worrying about things that no one will care about. But yeah, that seems like something he would be like very deliberate about. Do you ever find it odd how when we were younger, we all maybe 
had some fantasies or daydreams about being a sniper. Oh like, man, taking the life of people. <laughs> <laughs> I never really, you know, when I was younger, I never like connected like this is a person that won't be alive after I shoot him in the head. <laughs> right. I like, was just like somebody's <laughs> father. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I'd be sick to like sit on a mountain at you know a mile away and just. <laughs> <laughs> just shoot at people, but obviously, yeah. when you think about it, more than two seconds, it's not something that I want to do. <laughs> it's, it's haunting for sure. <laughs> yeah, especially after watching the movie. What was it with the Eastwood film with Bradley Cooper, where he's the? Isn't it called the Sniper? Yeah, American Sniper. American Sniper. Yeah, like that just yeah. makes me feel sad. But great movie but it's yeah. good but yeah not something that you're you know get inspired to go help other people afterwards and be a kind yeah. human all right last trivia point different songs and genres were considered for the killer's playlist but trent Reznor was the one who ultimately pushed for the Smiths because he and David Fincher and Andrew Kevin Walker all found it funny. Is that funny? That Are the Smiths a joke? Is that... I thought they were... I liked hearing that song. And I actually like yeah. the fact that he listens to it over and over and over. Like, that makes sense to me. It would make sense. It did feel like they were trying to be ironic with the playlist and stuff. Look, I'm a big fan. Nine Inch Nails band, so like I'm, I'm all about Trent Reznor, but yeah, I, I don't know, I, I felt like there was room for improvement on that. Yeah, I feel like, well, and I read also that they had gone through, so they had this list of songs, and then they would call the whoever it was, you know, the licensing agent or whoever, and and they would find out that, you know, this song ha was shared ownership with multiple parties and they weren't talking to each other for financial reasons. And so they wouldn't be able to get the, the green light to use that song. So they would go through these, all these songs and they had problems getting access to them. And so it came down to the Smiths and there was like, well, just use this over and over and over. And then it became also funny for them, but also I think it, it lends itself to a guy who's really methodical and listening to something over and over kind of would probably calm him down, I think. I know it does for me. Yeah. Like when I'm I'm a, a creative person, I'm not a killer, but I I create stuff and I can't listen to like music that I haven't heard before. I can't listen to a lot of lyrics. I can't watch like something in the background because it's so distracting, but I can listen to like eighties music for, for example, because I've heard it so much that it's not distracting, but yet it gets me in this groove to get work done. So I, 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 I thought that it makes was sense. Cool. Yeah. It makes sense. I, I just feel like they were trying to be a little too ironic for irony sake, but uh. Okay. Yeah, I, I was enough. good with it. I wasn't against it or with it, but I feel like, and I think it'll be a common thing for me. Yeah. That All right. You know, what? let's, this. let's get into beefs. I know I've got some, okay. um, we'll do beefs, puzzles and redemption beefs first. Where's the beef? Hey, where's the beef? I have three beefs and then you let me know what your beefs are. They're kind of all related. <laughs> all my beefs. So here's my first beef. Okay. The first the at the first of the film when he's doing his first hit well the one that we're watching at least and he accidentally killed the dominatrix mm -hmm. i didn't like it like i was really angry and i'll tell you why and then i'll tell you why after i s lived with it for a day how i actually like it more now that he did that okay so at first i was like okay your son he's just spent 20 minutes talking about how good you are and how meticulous you are. And then you shoot this lady. You're better than that. And that's the whole crux of everything of him right. having to do what he does for the rest of the movie. So I was kind of bummed. And then I was like, after you hear that story from Tilda Swinton, that joke 
about the bear. I really feel like there's two reasons why I think he made the mistake, and I'll do air quotes on that one. One, I think it could have been him trying to get out of the bit, like get out of the killing business. Like his heart just wasn't in it anymore. Yeah, he was like, if I kill this person inadvertently, then I have an excuse to go through and find all the clues and kill everyone that knows about anything and then I can get out of it. Or yeah, here, maybe. here's another scenario that I think could be a, a viable option is I think he got bored. I mean, he was talking about being bored the whole time and how like you have to have this, you know, ironclad ability to stay focused because it's just boring waiting, you know. It's exhausting. Yeah. yeah. And so I think I think he's just he loved I mean, you gotta like like killing a little bit to be a killer. And I think he Maybe. just I just think he was like, you know, I'm gonna mess this up because I need some some action. Like I just feel like he's so good. A lot of times he says no one knows that I've killed someone if I've done my job right. So in this instance he gets like an adrenaline rush out of it because now he's gotta evade where normally he would just pop that guy and walk out and go to the next hit, you know? So those are two things I thought of that made that, that mistake more cool for me. Okay. I'll let it sink in. Well, and also I was going, going back to that joke where the lady's talking about the guy who's basically getting bottom butt raped by the bear. <laughs> Sodomized. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. I Maybe I'll cut that out, but <laughs> anyway, it's 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 a parable of him. I think he did that just to like he just likes the the game. And and maybe by not being so perfect, he gets a chance to like maybe it's a new been, game. Yeah, yeah, it's a new a new version of what he's been playing for so many years and he's just bored and wants something interesting to do. I can see the angle. I anyway, can see where your head's at. So that's that yeah. was a beef and then also similar to that whole discussion line is the twitch. You know how he at the very end of the film he sits down, he gives his significant other girlfriend, wife, whatever she is, uh, a cappuccino or whatever. And then he sits down and the last thing that you see is his left eye twitch or kind of blink a little bit. At first I was like, that's lame. But then I thought more about it, about the story, about the joke and about his ma making the mistake. Could be two things. One, he's not done killing, meaning he's like okay. got the itch. Like I got out, I got everybody, everyone's dead except for he leaves the billionaire alive and then he gets that little twitch like oh maybe maybe I need to go get some killing in so I can relax okay I don't know what did you think so those those are my beefs so I was digging the concept and it felt like they had kind of abandoned it but I loved the monologue I loved I did how too he was throwing random stats out and I I think like I understand why why they were repeating the certain parts of the monologue, yeah. but like I I wish I would have heard more monologue when he gets surprised by the the big dude. Mm -hmm. I I would have loved to have heard his racing thoughts of oh shit I'm in trouble here, you know like. Like when he says that about his storage unit. Yeah. When he says, I picture <laughs> an episode of Storage Wars yeah. and their reaction when they open my storage unit. I would love to have more of that off the cuff monologue rather than the repetitious monologue. So that's one beef. Second beef was look, anybody who knows me knows that I love math i love numbers and i would i was digging the stats like i would and they kind of carried it but then it, they just it fell off and they i kind of let it understand. go yeah and i don't think they needed to i thought that was a really dynamic piece because you know to some of the reviewers points it was very slow and i think that 
if you're already carrying some of the movie off his monologue, then why not fill some of that slow time with more monologue? I, I just, and, and more stats, because how many times do we hear a stat that's factual and you're like, oh, really? Like you hear those in movies and all of a sudden you're engaged on a different level and it, it gets your, your brain moving on a different frequency. And so um, I think those are my two biggest beefs. And then just one, one final beef would be, I, I, I mean, why, why not end that dude at the end? The billionaire. I mean, he was the cause. Yeah, he was the cause of it all. I mean, he would have had to have planned more, I think, to have a, a way to kill him. I guess he had poison. So I. Th- I mean, he took all that time to to clone. Maybe the he's key too to, high I mean, profile. Too high profile, and maybe, maybe. Yeah. he can find a way to, you know, get back. My to thought him. was that. Yeah, the fear would be that. If, if he ends him, that doesn't end for him, right? Yeah. So he had to keep that guy alive with the fear that he would always come back for the loop to be closed. But or, I don't know. Or he's a rich, powerful guy. He could always uh, extort him for money or favors. Or, or or get back in the game, like you were saying, if he, yeah. if he needs to scratch that itch. Yeah. So, but, but. Yeah, my again, my biggest beefs were were with the the monologue not not being leveraged properly, and then I also think from a musical standpoint, I, I think they could have leveraged some things a little bit. I think they could have been a little more creative. Yeah, but I was gonna say when you were saying that, I I totally love stats. That's why I have it in my freaking show, but. I think that also there has to be some catalyst for him to do something. Otherwise, we're just going to be watching this this uh, assassin talk about stats for two hours. Like there has to be a something, a character arc that he has to do something. But I mean, they did that, right? Like they they showed him with the the girl, and like, don't you think that they could have created some inner monologue to continue to develop? that character and to get you attached and rooting for that character. Because to be honest with you, I just found myself not necessarily rooting for or rooting against any of them. And isn't that what you want in a movie? That's what makes sports so dynamic. I know, but I think you think you're generally picking a side. He's like, he's not a hero, but, but we kind of wanted him to win at the end. Like we, right. So I think that's good. Dude, you can see some of his humanity starts coming out through his the series of assassinations that he does. Like, See, but you think that it's going to only because he allowed for there to be dialogue. But ultimately, he never actually had humanity. I think that was the point. Well, he let that lady d- die with like a neck breaking, breaking her neck so she could get the insurance for her kids. Like, right. There's but, some, but isn't that, isn't that a better, like for him, he's got to do that. Right. Because if, if she just winds up missing, well, then they're going to ask questions about him well, or the lawyer guy. He chopped up the lawyer. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but again, the lawyer, he's got no ties other than her. And he's hes always tried to be somewhat invisible to the world because of his position. True. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a good segue into puzzles. Like, it is, it's, yeah, it's hard it. to pin down, I think. A sphincter says what? What? A sphincter says what? What? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I didn't know that the, I know I mentioned it yet last week, but I didn't know this was based on a graphic novel. And there are five more stories I believe left in the novel that are not, have been told yet. So we could get but a are sequel. They prequels I, or sequels. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that. I know there's more to more out there more content that he could pull from if he wanted to do another killer movie. I got to be honest, I'd probably watch it. I would too. 
Like I, all my buddies have been telling me to watch Mine Mine Hunter. Is it Mine Hunter on Netflix? That's also from. Yeah, um. Yeah, Mind Hunter. It's two two seasons on Netflix, directed by Fincher. And they say it's okay. very good. Speaking of what he's directed, by the way, I was going to mention it last week and I didn't, but his first film, he he was just doing like music videos for many, many, many mm-hmm. years. Like A lot of stars, yeah. Like Patrick Swayze, She's Like the Wind. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but his first movie, can you tell me what his first movie was? Uh, I don't know. Alien 3. Oh, that's in your wheelhouse. Whoa, show. Yeah, so I've reviewed all the Alien and Predator movies. So if you, if you want to know some crazy stories about Alien 3 and what David Fincher went through on his first film outing, it's mind-blowing. It's insane. All the stories about that movie are crazy. So go listen to that pod if you can. But he goes from there to like not wanting to direct because it was he didn't direct again until seven, which was oh, three years later. What a movie. Yeah. Then he then he rips off Fight Club. Oh. It's great. Epic. Uh Panic Room, which is underrated in my opinion. It's, it's really yeah, good. Really good. Then you've yeah. got Zodiac, which is very good. Curious case of Benjamin Button. Mm, well, that's it's there. For what it was. It's For fine. what it was, it was very good. Yeah. The social network, which is great. Really the girl with the dragon tattoo, great. And then Gone Girl, awesome. Amazing. Oh, and then I yeah. have I haven't seen Mank, but uh or Mind Hunter or Mank, but I've heard Mind Hunter Mind Hunter is great. I've heard Mind Mank is not so great. And then we've got the killer. I mean, it's distinguished. That's a distinguished list. Yeah. And then he's got like, after every movie, he it seems like he goes and directs a couple of, of like music videos to kind of shake, shake off the Hollywood gunk. And then he gets back yeah. to it. All right. Then the next, the last puzzle I have is, and I did not pick up on this. I feel like I should have, but the killer does not blink throughout the entire film. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm trying to play back the movie. Uh, <laughs> I didn't notice that. I feel like I should have picked up on that, but he doesn't blink. Like he never blinks once? I mean, obviously, Fassbender has to blink or his eyes will dry out and fall out. But like just while he's filming, they, he doesn't blink while he's on okay. on screen, which I thought Fast was makes me want to watch it again just for that. I know. It seems it's like a cool thing. It's like when you, you hear like, oh, there's this one shot that, you may have not even realized. And then you go back and watch it for those things. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Okay. Any puzzles you That's have awesome. before we get into our last category? No, I think you, you, you've done it justice. Yeah. What, I mean, what did you think about the eye twitch? What was your, what did you feel like that meant to you? Not and trying to not think about what I said already. Yeah. I didn't really pay any attention to it. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, to to be honest, like I I felt like maybe it was just like the deep breath of I can be reactionary, mm-hmm. right? I can I can look back and and kind of feel something like maybe humanity was was sinking back in. Which I thought the same. That's what I thought. I thought it was he had to go save who whomever his girlfriend, wife, whatever. But he also was, he was making mistakes, you know, and that's what maybe let that humanity come back in. Yeah. No, but I didn't really see the, the, the eye twitch. Like I didn't, I missed it. Yeah. It's the last thing that you see and it goes, fades to black. Well, it actually cuts okay. to black. But here, so here's something that I found on, it's on decider.com. It's an article. I really liked this. It said, the killer leaves it up to the audience to form an opinion on Fassbender's character. Is he the cool, calm, collected killer who simply made a mistake? Or did the logical thing in correcting his error? Or, as Swinton's character said, is he secretly a self-hating sadist who regrets his life of crime and decides to punish not only himself, 
but everyone else involved in the whole racket? Or was it all a mastermind plan to get himself out of this assassin life, kill off all the loose ends, and enjoy his life with Magdala? Magdala. Magdala. Mag, Magdala. Magdala. <laughs> Magdala. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So, I don't know. I th- I th- I think those are all possibilities and that's where I what I think the movie becomes better for me because I thought about it. Anytime a movie can make I even if it makes me angry, it's it's eliciting a reaction out of me and uh, that's what I liked about this. Is I I thought more about it afterwards. Yeah, I think that entire last kind of 20 to 30 seconds where He's able to take a breath where he's able to pour a cappuccino, where he's able to, like you've been saying that that humanity aspect, and then you even take a step further and go, okay, well, is he actually done with it? Or is he going to get back into it? Because yeah. all, albeit self, a little self-loathing, it wasn't like he was ever, there wasn't any monologue saying, I've got to get out of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like most of the other time it's, it's, it's the the assassin trying to hit a certain number in the bank account or you know mm-hmm. something like that and wanting out but that was never part of the the monologue Mm-mm. that's why i think that twitch is like i can't stop this is what this is who i am i'm an assassin yeah that's what i do yeah i could say it all right man let's get into popcorn redemption i have exercised the demon all right, I only have two. This is what I, I read, and I picked up on this when I watched this, but it's very interesting to me. Similar to Baby Driver, in the opening chapter, when the killer is listening to music with one earbud in, if you're watching the film with headphones, on the, mu- the, the music only plays on that side when the film shows the POV shots, his point of view. And I watched it on headphones because I had to watch it super late one night. And I didn't want to wake my family up. And I was like, this is the coolest sound design of all time. It was so cool to listen to that. And an interesting way to watch it, if you can watch it with the headphones, it's an interesting uh, experience. Okay. So well, I, once again, I might, I might be headed back to this. I was very, when I was sitting there and I have pretty good headphones, so don't watch them with just like, I guess it'll still work if you have like, you know, crappy headphones, but if you have a nice set of headphones, like you'll be able to experience that. And and it really brought me in if more into his like monologue, hearing that out of my right ear, it was kind of cool. Overall, I like it. There was a review that I read last week and I, I know you and I were laughing about it, but where he said he only got to, you know, he's sad that it, that he only can see this one time, meaning he can't watch it again for the first time. Yeah. For the first time. Yeah. There's only one time where you get to watch something and have that experience. And, uh, I agree with him. Like I, I was sucked in and I was captivated and I was confused a little bit for for a bit, and then I ruminated with it, and I came back to it and thought, "Man, this is better than I than I like wrote it off initially." So I liked it, man. I thought it was great. Yeah, and I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm giving it a large bucket, dude. Going straight into it, I would probably give it a large bucket as well. Um, okay. Again, did did I want more? Yeah. Yeah. But- like, isn't that what a movie sometimes is supposed to do is, is make you wanting, like leave you wanting more. And I, I would, if they made this into a series, I, I would probably watch that as well. I like would a watch trilogy the, or something like three movies. Yeah. Or maybe even, it may be even origin story into one follow up into this episode into maybe, you know, the, the ending. So yeah. make it into a kind of a four step, a four step series. Oh yeah. Um, that would actually would be, be great. That would be cool to see how he got into it. You know, that would be right. really they go cool. Back, right. They go back and then they go one more in between. Then you've got this one and then 
how it all wraps up. Like, does he go back to the billionaire and need to finish the job? Yeah. Something. I thought this was, was a really unique movie and there wasn't ever a point where I was like, eh, now there wasn't ever a point where I was like, Oh hell yes. But it just, it, it had me, which, which I appreciated. Um, which, by the way, the Magdala gal is is Brazilian, Brazilian German. Bro, I looked her. her up. I mean, she's she looks like hot trash the whole movie and has a bunch of scars, but she's very beautiful yeah. when she's not has have all the makeup and blood and you know scars. Yeah, her face. she's a beautiful lady. Yeah, she's been in a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of Brazilian movies. I think Fassbender is so talented. If people don't know him or they're not familiar w- enough with him, like go go watch some some of his movies because he is just great, man. You know, I teetered on a, on a medium bucket, but as we talked about it and kind of uh, discovered just a little more, I, I feel that the large bucket was was well-deserved. Yeah. And that's where I was at too. I was at a medium bucket. And then over the course of a day or so, when I was doing the research, I was like, you know what, this is, this is better than I think most people realize. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it's nice. It's really good. Yep, and I, I agree. And I think it even would, would be better if we had those other stories that you just talked about. If we, if we could get one or two more stories in there, it really would fill out this, how good that this is standalone. It's, it's good, but it it's better. I think when you like bookend it with those, those other stories that we may, may or may not get. Agreed. All right, man. Anything else we miss? No, just get out there and, and keep watching the, the movies that we're, we're laying out for the, the listeners keep coming back and supporting the, the popcorn priest. Thank you. I think uh, I think we did a good one here. Yeah, so some movies that are coming up, I think I want to do, I don't know about with you, but I know I'm going to do The Thing. I feel like we should try to do that totally killer if we can figure that out. And then yep. for my 200th episode, I will be doing Goonies. Yeah. So look forward to that. That's great, man. All no, right. I think, uh, I think that wraps it up. That's it for this week. But I am with you always. Look for me in the cloud at Popcorn Priest. I'm on all the social medias. I would love it if you'd come and talk and ruminate with me about movies. I like it. I respond to all of my correspondence from people. So come come, come talk to me. Also, if you have a movie lover in your life, share it. Another way to support the show is by throwing a few monies at the priest by visiting patreon.com forward slash popcorn priest and see what extra perks you can enjoy. And if you made it this far, go give us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I command thee. And as always, thanks for listening. And thanks to my reoccurring guest, Mr. Brazil, who has, who has weird firewalls when it comes to streaming certain titles, Sack Launch. <laughs> yes, I do. Always a pleasure, brother. And remember, when you watch movies, you can pop off, pop in, or pop out, but always bring the popcorn. <laughs>